Hi there! Let's discuss data quality metrics for machine learning models production monitoring. And we will start from the question, what can go wrong with the input data? Well, if you have pretty complex systems, which uses data from different sources in order to generate some outputs to you, if this service is very complex, then there are quite a lot of things which can go wrong with your data. Let's discuss the example you can see right now. For example, if you need to use your machine learning model in order to generate some promo scores for your marketing campaign, you might want to use data from many different sources to take into account different signals. For example, you might want to use data from the customer database, from mobile application clickstream, from web application clickstream as well, some maybe call center data, and the promo spreadsheet, which is manually created by some product managers, right? Then you will need to kind of unify those data, place it all into data warehouse, then perform some joins, do some feature engineering, and then fit this clean table into your machine learning model so that it can generate to you some outputs. It sounds like a lot of steps, right? And because there are a lot of steps, you can have some issues on each and every step. So let's discuss what can go wrong with such models. You know the golden rule, garbage in, garbage out. This is why it's very important to make sure that there is no wrong data we fit to our model. In case you have a lot of steps in your pipeline, there are quite a lot of things which can go wrong. For example, you can have the wrong data source problem, some lost access, wrong SQL or non-SQL query, some infrastructure update which prevents you from getting the right data, or even broken feature code. For example, if you use some third-party data, there can be some data schema change which you are not aware of and this will influence the way how your model sees the data. And for example, if some managers who are not aware uh, that you actually build your machine learning model taking into account the structure of the data, if they just decided to update the system, update the table with some new names, maybe some additional information or uh, like changing the format of some um, feature in order to introduce more information to you, they might think that they do some harmless changes and even update the system for better. But if you rely on the structure of this table, it can be a problem. So this is why it's important to monitor for such things. Together with that, if you use quite a lot of data sources, sometimes there can be some issues with the data source as well. For example, broken in application logging or some front and sensor values in case you use some physical sensor, third party actions issues and many, many more like this. We already discussed in the details at the very beginning the schemes where we have several models interacting with one another and in case there are some issues with some upstream models, all the downstream models suffer. So there are quite a lot of things. This is why we need to monitor for data quality to make sure that we feed to our model the right data. So data quality metrics and analysis. I would suggest you to start from the data profiling. Basically, this is the good starting point because based on the data type, you can come up with quite a lot of descriptive statistics. For example, for numerical feature, and here you can see the example with temperature, you can calculate quite a lot of statistics, like minimum, maximum values, some quantiles, unique values, most common values, share of missing values, and etc. etc. You can see the distribution, you can compare the distribution between the reference data and the current batch, or between the previous batch and current batch of data, and by doing that, check whether the data looks exactly as you expected. If you do not have any reference data to compare with, you can still come up with some rules manually or again based on the data type. For example, you can say that you do not want to have any missing values and if there are some missing values, please raise an alert. So in this case, you do not need to have a reference data because you can just manually decide on the threshold, like 1% of missing data, not more. Same goes to some duplicated counts or rows or constant maybe almost constant features, some thresholds for correlation between the features. For example, you might do not want to have any correlated features. And if during some period of time you see that some features are correlating, you might also raise an alert, right? Maybe you can check for some target leaks and alert on high correlation between your numerical target um, 
feature, a numerical target and numerical feature, as well as categorical ones, right? And, well, if there are some important features, you might create some alerts on the range violations. For example, based on the feature context on your ex or, or your expertise in the domain area. For example, if you know that this feature is dedicated for salary and this feature is dedicated for age, then based on our domain expertise, you can say that, well, at least both should be non-negative, right? Well, that's how you can do without any reference data. If you have a reference data, it, I would say, became much easier because you can come up with all these test thresholds uh, based on your reference data. So basically the idea is that you can automatically compare your current new batch of data with the reference one and alert on the bigger um, differences. For example, you can check the expected data scheme with something you expect from the reference data, or again, you can manually, uh, you can manually say what are expected column types. Uh, you can alert on the data completeness, on the patch sizes, on the patterns for specific columns like share of new non-unique values or share of unique values, right? Specific data distributions, for example, normal or some or normal distribution with some specific mean value or other descriptive statistics like average, medians, quantiles, min, max, and etc. etc. So you just need to come up with the statistics you want to measure for different features uh, or columns, right? And have a good reference data set and decide on what size of the differences you uh, see as the problem, right? Uh, well, there are quite a lot of ways how you can get the auto-generated test conditions based on the reference. We evidently have the very nice algorithms which allows you to do that. And in this case, for doing this reference-based test conditions, you just need to create with, uh, your good reference data and pass it to evidently. But be careful, because if you do not work on test conditions manually, then you need to invest some time into creating and creating right very representative reference data set. In this case, it's as important as test conditions, right? Let me show you the example of after-generated test from the evidently library. In this case, we have a test mean value stability, and basically what we do here is we calculate the mean value for a numerical feature. In our case, it's hours per week, and we compare this mean value with the range which we observed during the reference data. So the range from reference is from 13.4 to 67, yes, and our calculated mean value is equal to 40 and a half. So it's within the range. This is why a test is successful. And here is a superlative picture which shows the distribution from the current and the reference data set, the conditions and the calculated value. So you can see that the calculated value is within the expected range and all passed. Next, we will have some practice and we are going to see how exactly we can create some data quality tests and reports using Python. Let's dive in.